Hello and welcome to another video from UNM.NU. This is your University of New Money. Except for this video, I'm calling it a University of New Mercy video. So UNM.NU still works for this video. I wanted to take this video a little different direction than I usually do my videos. And don't worry, this channel I'm still going to be talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, fantasy sports, especially fantasy golf these days since that's the main sport which I'm interested in right now based on the times we're living in. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about experiences I've had in my life in case it helps any of you. Is It's been a very interesting journey through life as I like to still look for hope in the future with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. I believe that's life-changing wealth that could be experienced. Um, if you're interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, we are early adopters, and I believe there is huge growth to be experienced if you believe in the markets. Then for fantasy sports, I've always been a huge sports junkie. I love my golf. I love my NBA. We'll see how that is coming back at the end of July. Uh, baseball looks like they're trying to get the season started at the end of July, and then NFL, we'll see if their season starts on time. The big news there is Cam Newton signing with the New England Patriots. But anyway... This video is going to be totally different. As I've had a lot of experiences in my life which have affected who I am, what I believe, and where I'd like to go in life. And so I just kind of wanted to share these with you today. So again, if you're not interested in this kind of video, if you're more interested in my Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, or fantasy sports, fantasy golf videos, this might not be for you. But this is a video I felt needed to be made, just in case it helps any of you. If it helps one person, this video is totally worth making. And so, today what I did is I came up with some experiences I've had in my life, which these are not all of them. I probably will come out with more videos like this, sharing more stories I've had in my life, which makes me believe in God, which... I always try to have 100% faith in Him. Uh, sometimes I have my moments of doubt, my moments of weaknesses, but... In the end, I've had so many experiences in life that to deny God is just ridiculous based on the experiences I've had. And so I just kind of want to share what I've gone through in my life. And so I go back to kindergarten when, I remember I was only five years old at the time. I didn't, I was barely conscious at the time. I mean, trying to think way back then, that's over 30 years ago. So I remember there was a time where I was going off a slide and this was a metal slide, very old. It was not... It was a pretty poor school that I went to, so they didn't have the most high-tech equipment. It didn't have any railings or anything. It was a slide. I ended up falling off the side of it and landing on my head. And again, trying to think back over 30 years ago to the event happening is, you know, obviously my memory would be a little bit fuzzy based on the fact I fell on my head and the fact that this happened over 30 years ago. But I just think about all the horrible things that could have happened. Is this was I, I must have been at least over five feet off of the ground and landing on my head. I mean, I could have been paralyzed. I could have died. Who knows? And I mean, I, in terms of the brain damage I've experienced, who knows? I mean, uh, I would definitely say I'm not normal. Is I, <laughs> I definitely have my little quirks and whatever. And whether any of that was caused by the slide or just because of who I am, who knows? But you know, it makes you think. Just what could have happened in that moment when I was five years old and how it affects the rest of your life and how I honestly think God protected me on that day is so many bad things could have happened and I think I turned out okay. I mean, I guess it's questionable how okay I am today, but I mean, all joking aside is a lot of horrible things could have happened and I believe he protected me being that young, not knowing what I was doing, hitting my head. I mean, a lot of horrible things could have happened and for the most part, my health was unaffected based of the based on that incident. And this is just I made a whole list of these and just by themselves, maybe you could say it's coincidence, maybe you know, it's just random probability. But when I put all these together, this is where my faith in God is just huge, is I cannot see all these events happening in my life and that God was not involved in protecting me, teaching me that there's no way that these things could all happen to me just by chance. I don't believe that. And so I go back to a road trip I took uh, from my home state to where my great-grandma lived. Uh, this would have been about 
30 years ago. So kindergarten would have been more like 35 years ago. This road trip took place more like 30 years ago. And it was raining. My mom was driving fairly fast. It must have been 80, 90 miles an hour. It was, it was a little long road trip, 10, 12, 14 hours to get from where I lived to where we were going. Uh, in a vehicle, we didn't fly. We liked to do road trips back in the day. So we wanted to get there, you know. We weren't driving 60 miles an hour. That would have taken forever to get to our destination. So my mom was driving a little bit faster than she should have, but it was raining. We were making a turn. She hydroplaned. There's a semi truck heading straight at us from the other direction. Somehow my mom, my grandma and myself, we slipped on the road. The truck who was coming toward us went right past us. We went into the oncoming traffic lane, went down an embankment, which was all filled with grass. Our car didn't flip over or anything. We just slid down the embankment and all of us were safe because we got a tow truck that got us out of that predicament. No damage to ourselves, to the car. But imagine hitting a semi-truck head on. And I don't think any of us were wearing our seatbelts that day. So that could have been a very tragic, tragic situation. Is I, I was at the time again. I, you know, this was 30 years ago. I was like 10 years old, and so I was playing my Game Boy or whatever back in the day. So I, I mean, I, you know, I was making myself comfortable in the back seat. Looking back, I mean, I wear my seatbelt every time I'm in a vehicle these days. Back then, I was dumb and ignorant. I'm still dumb and ignorant, but um, yeah, I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I, I don't mind going through them today just to analyze what's happened in my life and whether you can take anything from these experiences in my life and if any of them can help you I don't know I'm going to share them with you today again if this helps one person just the craziness which has gone in my life sometimes I think my life is so boring but when I look back and think of all the craziness that's happened in my life how my life could have ended at any moment and yet God protected me is if this helps inspire any of you. That's why I want to share this today. Is I believe I've had these experiences for a reason, and I want to share them with you. And I just know when I became a teenager and got my own vehicle, as I was a reckless driver, as I thought I was invincible, as I went 100 miles an hour on the freeway, and the speed limit back then was 65 miles an hour in the city. So I was going 35 miles an hour over. I believe today that's a felony if you get arrested going that fast over the speed limit put myself and others at risk. Today I'm a pretty safe driver, I'd like to think, because I'll go five miles an hour over the speed limit. Uh, my dad was a police officer for 30 years, if not longer, especially as a security guard. And he always said five miles an hour over the speed limit, that's reasonable. But going 100 miles an hour on the freeway is reckless. I Something I can't believe I did it. So many horrible things could have happened is... In this city, there's people dying every day on the freeway, and I could have been one of them, being that reckless. Um, and throughout my entire life, the whole theme has been the rage that I've experienced, whether it's the rage against the political parties and power, the rage against things that have happened in my life is... I'll never forget this incident. Is is that Petco has actually bought a heat lamp. Now I wanted to return it because for whatever reason it didn't work. It was $10. Pretty insignificant amount of money. And I had been standing there waiting for the cashier just because I wanted to return this item. Well, when I got there, there was nobody in line. But standing waiting for this cashier, apparently I was not standing in the right location. I should have been on the right side of all the cashiers. I was standing on the left side of all the cashiers. So... By the time I finally got the cashier's attention, there were like five, six people standing in line. And I had been waiting in there way before these five to six people had gotten in line themselves, but I was standing in the wrong location. And I told him, I just want to return this heat lamp. And he said, you got to get in line. And I knew I had been standing there way before the people were standing, I guess, in the correct line. I was in the incorrect location, and just based on my range... I walked out of the store, and where I thought nobody had saw, seen me is I just threw the heat lamp in a random location. And I know it probably hit some of the merchandise and knocked it off the shelves. It could hit somebody in the head. I don't believe it did, because uh, I ended up walking fairly briskly to my car and taking off right away. 
I looked back in the distance and saw people had come out of the store looking for me. I ended up escaping from the location. They never found me. Uh, but I don't think anybody got hurt, but just in my rage, I made a horrible decision is I was so frustrated that I just wanted to return this heat lamp. I, it's almost, if you've seen the movie uh, Falling Down with Michael Douglas, I love that movie. There's so many weird things happen to him in that movie, and one of them is, you know, he gets to a fast food restaurant one or two minutes late, wants breakfast, and they will not serve him breakfast, and he just goes into that rage. And I feel... Sometimes I get to that thing, too, is when I feel an injustice like that, where I've been standing in line, but apparently not in the exact location I should have been, is I believe it's an injustice against me, and that's the rage I felt that day. And looking back, it was so stupid. Is I, why I would act in that sort of manner is I'd like to think I've matured since, that must have been about 20 years ago, and so I'd like to think I've come a long way since then, but that rage... Um, you see it today, a lot of road rage. In that case, it was pet co rage. But something that I think about a lot where I made a stupid decision in the heat of the moment, and I'd like to think I've matured since, the, since then, but I'd like to think God again helped protect the people that day, that somebody could have gotten hit in the head with the heat lamp, maybe even died from that kind of impact the way I threw it. And yet, it looks like everybody got unscathed that day. Um, when I was in college, I had a scooter because I was impatient going from class to class, trying to get to the bus, which was pretty far away, or maybe sometimes I didn't even want to take the bus. I wanted to scooter to my vehicle instead of taking the bus. And so it's just that impatience. And I just think about how fast I was going on that scooter, how one time I hit a rock and fell off of the scooter. I was not going that fast at that time, but many times I was going just recklessly down hills and buses were right next to me, and I just think about how I could have hit a bump, hit a rock, anything, fallen off of the scooter, gotten run over by a bus or vehicle, and how God again protected me at those times. When I look back, I would be a lot safer on those scooters today, but back then I felt invincible. And yeah, God was there for me. Is he? I, the time I fell off of my scooter by hitting the rock, I looked back and I thought, man, this could happen at any time when I was way more reckless. I was going at a very slow speed when I actually hit that rock. It made me look back at the times of my life where worse things could have happened. And that leads me to a huge topic in my life, which is alcohol. Um, you know, all of us have our demons in life, and for me, alcohol is the one I've been battling for a very long time, and I'm not afraid to share it. Um, and when I look back on my life, um, I know God's been there for me. He's been trying to battle this demon for a long time. Sometimes I'm better than others. I feel like I've come a long way, especially when I look at where I was maybe five years ago. Even a couple years ago, I feel I've come a long way. But there are these times where I do have my moments of weakness and relapse, and it just happens. And I feel bad about it. Um, and luckily, God has always been there for me, and I always want to think maybe I can beat this demon and put it away, but it's really a daily battle. And I just think about the things I've done in my past is um, I was visiting my cousin and I had way too much alcohol. And luckily I knew at the time I was not ready to drive, so I stayed there another hour or two while they played video games and just tried to sober myself up. But when I got to my car, I know I was way over, way over the legal limit. And I was paranoid. Um, this was around midnight when I was driving back home. It was like a 30 mile, 30 minute and 30 mile drive back to my home. And down all of these side streets, I saw cops everywhere with their lights on pulling people over. And I just thought if there was a cop that pulled me over, I was done for. I mean, there was no way I was going to get out of that incident. And yet I kept my eye on the GPS. I tried to go to the speed limit. I tried to stay in my lane since I didn't black out or anything, which has been a big problem in my life. But God guided me home that night and was able to get me to my bed without injuring anybody. Um, but like I said, blacking out has been a big problem, and big problem in my life. And so I remember one time when I was at a brewery, as I had, normally there's a three drink limit, and that night I had five pints of beer, which were fairly strong beers. And I had been eating chicken wings, talking to this African-American man. We were having a great time. Uh, but finally I knew it was time to go home. And I'll admit, is I blacked out from the time I got to my car 
until I woke up the next morning in my bed, as I literally don't remember any of that time from the time I got to my car until I woke up the next morning. And I just think I could have woken up in a prison cell. I could have woken up, I could have ended up dead, as I could have never woken up again. And yet when I woke up the next morning, I thought, what the heck happened? As I was at that brewery, I got to my car, and I don't remember anything after that. Is how did I guide the vehicle from that brewery back to my home? Is I believe that's an act of God. Is um, I know people black out and they're able to function and have no memories, but I have had so many of these moments that I have a hard time believing that I was able to get home safely without the power of the Holy Spirit. Is I believe there is either a guardian angel or something. Which the fact that I've been able to avoid catastrophic incidents in my life to where I could have killed myself, could have killed others. Somehow I was able to wake up each day and I believe for whatever reason God has protected me. Is There's so many storms in life. There's correcting storms, protecting storms, perfecting storms. And for whatever reason God has protected me in situations where I didn't deserve his mercy where I should be dead today I, if it wasn't for his will. Um, one of my weirdest incidents was going to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I had been drinking alcohol a day for um, March Madness. And we ended up going to a strip club, drinking more alcohol. I ended up spending over $5,000 that night. Looking back on it, pretty insignificant figure as many people have spent tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars at strip clubs. Luckily I got away with this with just $5,000 worth of alcohol and apparently VIP services at the strip club. And I'm not a fan of strip clubs, if any of you know me, not into that. Um, but I was intoxicated and my friends thought it would be a great idea to go to a strip club and in my intoxicated state I thought it would be too. And so I blacked out for three hours and in between the time I remember at the strip club until the three hours later I woke up in a casino um, on Fremont Street and I don't know what happened during those three hours if anything horrible could have happened I could have been abducted I could have been robbed I could have been beaten up I could have been killed because I don't know what happened in those three hours in between the strip club and waking up in the bathroom stall of a casino where somebody was checking my ID and kicking me out of the casino. I don't know why I was being kicked out of the casino. Maybe I was being hor horribly obnoxious, but looking back on it is a horrible thing, but God protected me again. Is So many horrible things could happen to me during that time. And so, you know, I've been on again, off again with alcohol. Is I, I always enjoy having a beer or two. Is I believe there's most of the time in my life, especially lately, I can have a beer, two, even three with my friends, family, and I can stay in control is um, based on the incidents I've had in my life. In fact, after the brewery incident, I got a voluntary breathalyzer put in my car. I should have had a DWI so many times in my life, but I got a voluntary breathalyzer in my car, so I couldn't start it unless I was below 0 .05, which is below the legal limit here, um, just to make sure that I was safe enough to drive. And so most of the times I've been able to start my car. I've been able to drink beers and relax and have fun with friends and yet still feel safe enough to drive where I'm not blacking out, where I'm not intoxicated and can't control my vehicle. Is I believe below .05 I am as safe of, of a driver as I am totally sober. So, But there are times where I get above that .05 limit. Um, not driving a vehicle, luckily. I, I feel like I've gotten better at driving vehicles sober or close enough to sober where I'm safe, but I have my moments of weakness where sometimes I just have too much beer and black out, and I consider myself a Christian alcoholic, um, which seems weird because I know alcohol is a sin when it's abused in that way, and I do not like sinning against God, and yet every time I try to stay strong, I have my moments of weakness, and I guess one thing I always think about is a necklace that I have, which gives me hope. It's Philippians 4.13, that I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And so every time I fall down, every time I've had one of these incidents which could have changed my life forever, and have changed my life forever in some way, I think about them a lot. But I could end up, I, sh I very well could be dead today, and yet God has 
given me this life that I still lead to maybe help inspire others that, you know, whether you doubt God exists, I believe 100% in God's. I have my moments of doubt as there's times where I want to be 100% faith in God and for whatever reason I just think maybe he's not out there. But when I look back on all these incidents and may, many more that I've had in my life, like I said, maybe I'll make more videos on other things that have happened in my life, is I just know he's out there. That there is no coincidence that God exists. He's gotten me through these impossible situations and he's out there to help me. So that's my video for today. Um, this is my University of New Mercy for today. I'll still be doing University of New Money videos. And, you know, if you're interested in cryptocurrency or fantasy sports, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. But I'll probably be even doing more videos of this University of New Mercy, which I felt inspired to release today. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel out immensely. Please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, hit the notification bell to get notification of new videos which come out. As I just like to come out with videos which hopefully help you, whether it is cryptocurrency, whether it is fantasy sports, whether it is just thinking about religion and faith is these are things that I like to think about a lot and you know if you're going through a very tough time as I know it's a weird time we're living in in 2020 is I think about all these weird things that have happened in my life and how different my life could be and yet there's still hope out there that I believe God is out there and that he is things have happened in our lives for a purpose and if these experiences help you realize that God is out there, is, you know, I'll be praying for you all to help increase your faith in God the way he's helped me. And, you know, this is what I have for tonight. So we'll be in touch. Take care and God bless.